So far, we are not seeing that GOP surge that many Republicans had forecasted. With five races still to call, it's unclear who will control the Senate. You've got Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Alaska still do not have a winner at this hour. Control of the House is leaning Republican, but only barely. Democrats overall are doing much better than expected. Our chief election and campaign correspondent, that's Robert Costa, is following all of this. Bob, good morning to you. Politics never gets old, does it? It does not, Gail. Good morning. This was not the night most Republicans expected. Their hope for big red wave, that never materialized. The GOP may yet win control of the House, but the Senate still up for grabs after several key races went blue. I'm so humbled. Thank you so much. Pennsylvania's Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman overcame any doubts about his stroke recovery with a narrow victory over television doctor Mehmet Oz. This Senate race won of the tightest and most watched. This campaign has always been about fighting for everyone who's ever been got knocked down that ever got back up. <laughs> The Keystone State's Democratic Attorney General Josh Shapiro nabbed the governor's race, handily defeating Trump-backed Republican and 2020 election denier Doug Mastriano, who refused to concede. We're going to have faith and have patience. We're going to wait till every vote counts, right? When they're finished counting the votes from today's election, that we're going to have received more votes than my opponent. We know that. Down in Georgia, incumbent Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock barely outpolled football star and GOP challenger Herschel Walker. And because neither is above 50 percent, Georgia law mandates a runoff, which is now expected for December 6th. We're in a fight, are we not? We're in a fight. Republican and Trump-backed J.D. Vance took a key open Senate seat in Ohio, triumphing over Democrat Tim Ryan. I have the privilege to concede this race to J.D. Vance because the way this country operates is that when you lose an election, you concede. In Wisconsin's Senate race, it's too close to call. Republican incumbent Ron Johnson is still battling Mandela Barnes for the win in the razor-tight toss-up. In battleground Arizona, Democrat and former astronaut Mark Kelly is edging ahead of Republican Blake Masters. And in the governor's race there, Democrat Katie Hobbs has an edge over Trump loyalist Carrie Lake. But that race might take days to decide. And Lake has wasted little time in stoking electoral doubts about some technical issues with voting machines in Maricopa County. But officials there say every vote has and will be counted. We had a big day today, and don't let those cheaters and crooks think anything different. We have uh, some races that are hot and heavy. and Probably more than former President Trump was predicting at his rallies leading up to Election Day. Exit polls show inflation and abortion were top of mind. And economic headwinds were not enough for some of his back candidates to fend off some pretty stiff competition, including in the House, where predicted huge gains have faded. But Florida Governor Ron DeSantis might have moved closer to a possible 2024 presidential bid with a commanding victory over former Governor Charlie Chris. Freedom is here to stay. Also in the Sunshine State, Republican Senator Marco Rubio picked up a double-digit win over Representative Val Demings. And in Nevada, it's still a toss-up, but currently the results show incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto trailing Republican Adam Laxalt. Bob, thank you. I appreciate you. I know you're not going anywhere, so we'll check back in with you a little bit later.